Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast, where we always keep it one. Pulled up, J. Cole, Nicki Minaj. I got everything. I really kind of oh, yeah, you pulled up at a Tesla. No, I'll say what you was gonna say, Max. I really don't fuck with these bit. Oh <laughs> I just yo, I don't yo. know too much about the Bow Wow Romeo. But, nah, uh, brother, go ahead. Romeo. Brother, go ahead and say what you gonna say. Record it. <laughs> yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Eight More Than 92 podcast where we always keep it 100 with you. We are your crew, Harrison. Thanks. Okay, I guess he's not gonna say anything. And now, oh, uh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I'm trying to cut his arrow on my bag. Nah, that's cool, brother. <laughs> you ain't paying no gas in that bitch. That air ain't working. All right, <laughs> so we're no here gas. for another episode today. Uh, guess we already pre started pre gaming this episode, started talking. Uh, Banks started dropping the secrets out here, but uh, how's everybody <laughs> hanging so far? I'm good, man. Relax. Oh. Good. You know, another day, another day. No dollars? Oh, okay, well, we got the broke niggas. Nah, ain't no man. dollars. It's salary out here. Mm-hmm. So I guess, you know, since I came through late, you know, first and foremost, I want to shout out to, you know, our first victory out here in these streets. You know, your boy came out there balling on them. You know, it's, it's nothing, but this ain't about me. You know what I'm saying? This is about the people. You know what I'm saying? We giving the people what y'all want. And I know y'all want to know what my stats was. It was just a meager <laughs> J. Cole six. stats. It just, please. That nigga <laughs> dead, six right. points. I say you had six points, three rebounds. Yo, bro, Cali is not that far where I will not put hands on you, bro. Don't, 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 don't disrespect my game. Bro. How many points you have? I mean, I had 24. <laughs> is it in honor of Kobe? You lying. Inducted? That's what about. No, it's because I, hit, <laughs> because I hit three threes and then I drove to the 24 room. points, six assists. That's what we're doing. All I said was 24 points. I, I didn't even think of Kobe. <laughs> Eight I, steals. All right, bro. What sport you play? Oh, okay. If you out here coaching these kids on the football field, they never took a motherfucking tackle a day in your life. <laughs> so let's get but well, let's keep it out here. So like I said, shout out to the squad. You know how it go, gang gang. So, anyways, uh since they brought it up, uh, you know, Josh, you had anything going on besides your air not working and your hate? <laughs> nah, man. I mean, you know, I just got the Airbnb happening right now. So, you know, just making trying to make a little bread on the side. That's about it. Oh, okay, you know. Make sure, you know, if y'all see my man sleeping in his car honking, so I'm going to let you know if he got an open room at the Airbnb out in Cali. But uh, I guess since Banks went ahead and said it, you know, Cold World went out here and he dropped <clears throat> this much-anticipated album. What's the name of it? Off Season? Yeah, the Off Season, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, you know, so, uh, you know, how did y'all people feel about it? Um, I feel like we – well, we knew the episode was coming out when we talked about it last week, but <laughs> I guess it just kind of fell right in line with the next episode – to give a take, so what y'all give it? Uh, whoever whoever could speak first. Uh, I think it was good. I might probably the shortest. I think it was it was it was what he should have been giving us before. Um, it, like I think you gave you shot me a text. I said it was after after you know listening to it a solid B, and I agree with that solid B performance. I like the surprise guest. I like the surprise twenty one and little baby. Um, I even like Cameron's uh, part on i guess what you would consider like the intro the first song um yeah, first that's, that's usually yeah i like it uh i've never i never heard of this boss guy uh but i guess he seems pretty straight but um other than that i mean yeah i feel like it was a solid album i'm happy that he gave us something that was solid and we could listen to i can listen to this again and i've actually had a couple songs in rotation by now so uh, I think it was I think it was good effort from Jay, and it was also how many songs? I know it's thirty nine minutes. I can't remember how many songs. I think it was 12. twelve. Okay, I, I like I an album like that. I like a short, concise album. He didn't give us twenty one or thirty. You know, he didn't go overboard. He gave us a nice twelve to fifteen, uh, you know, song list, and I messed with it. <clears throat> hmm. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I feel like you know, normally I say something bad about it, but. 
I actually think that the J. Cole, I think it was good. I, I liked it a lot. Um, I thought it was going to be just hype. I really didn't think it was going to be, you know, you. actually that good. But uh, like you said, you said the same thing to me. You sent me a text at B plus. I give you that. I give, I give you a solid B plus. I think I think it was really put together. I think you could tell this time that he was focused on music. And I feel like a lot of these last few albums, I don't really feel like he's been really focused on music. I feel like he's been doing other things and he kind of just like, well, let me just drop this album too. So this time I kind of, I felt like he put in a little work on this time. Did it make and then went to go play basketball in Rwanda. And then went to go hoop. <laughs> <laughs> did, it, did it make you moist? I ain't never had no do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you got going on, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I would never ever have to do that. But no, nah, no, nah, but I he do, them, he do them like Charlemagne type of setups where he just say something wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so nah, you bite nah. on it. No, nah, <laughs> man. With a straight man. face. Nah, straight face like I, like I say it. Ain't nobody messing with no moist. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, we only use them words, right? <laughs> okay. Hey, you know, I sign up. I get my take. I saw this was uh, something funny. It was uh, I saw uh, what was it? Because only because you know what they say, niggas don't say. I saw this one chick said, uh, "I don't like niggas that order pink lemonade." It's just that's weird. <laughs> I ain't never seen that. Okay, <laughs> I promise you it was that. And then the other one was uh, she said I was out dating. No, she said I was out at the park and I saw this girl. My daughter met a friend. And so um, I went to the guy and asked, could my daughter play, you know, with your daughter for a play date? And he was like, cool, what's the number? And he's like, cool, I'll give it to my wife. Y'all can set something up. And she was like, that's really weird. for Cause I guess it was a man who had enough common fucking sense. No, he ain't gonna go on no play date with no right. grown ass woman and a kid. And he got a whole wife. He was like, no, nah, you can set that up. Y'all could be cool with it, but. You can't yeah. tell your wife that. Like how you even going, hey baby, I'm finna go out to the park. I'm finna meet up with this girl. We're gonna have a play date with the kids. No. Yeah, that ain't working nowhere. <laughs> no, nah. so my birthday, pink lemonade, that's weird. Yeah, oh, if you see what they say, what is it? Uh, I, My man can't go out and order desserts. I find it funny. That is, it's oh, funny though. That's funny. That one, the, funny the, most recent, <laughs> the most recent one is what type of a uh, man man celebrates his birthday? I'm like, damn, what? niggas can't have birthdays and stuff like that. They're they gonna take every day away from us. <laughs> niggas can't do nothing. I guess it's gonna fall to the 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 back end. Niggas can't do nothing. I'm talking about we. So we can, who can do these things? then if we if niggas can't do it, not straight ones apparently. Right, right. I guess yeah. <laughs> and then, but then on the other end, it'll turn into this cycle where. Uh, now we broken because we, you know what I'm saying. Now they dealing with a broken man who ain't never celebrated anything, who ain't never. It's like, come on, what you want? We cancel toxic masculinity, right? <laughs> I be, be looking at like some of this. I'm like, I'm just looking. I was like, God damn, if this is the standard, I might be gay because I order dessert. I definitely like pink lemonade. So I'm like, if I'm going by dessert? y'all, huh? You order dessert? I mean, I don't, I'm usually out. With, I'm usually out with somebody, but I'm saying like, if it, if we go to like a certain place, like on the record, you just say you might be gay. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm saying I said if I also said if I'm going by their rubric, so I'm like I like pink lemonade. Uh, I usually if I go to Chili's, I usually get the big ass cookie. Um, <laughs> I've gone out on my birthday last year, so I might I, I might like dick. But I'm going by what the way they tell us. So but, you use the word moist. So I think it's all lining up here. I guess so. So niggas, uh, holla at your boy. My, right. name, uh, my name is uh, Joshua Edwards. You can find me on <laughs> the Cali. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, I, I you know, like I said, they call me, they call me Joshy. Street. You know what I'm saying? They call, right. me, they call me Joshy Poshy. I'm strictly dickly. Y'all can holla at me in Cali. Hey, holla, holla at once again, me. Once again, ain't nobody ever call me Joshy Poshy or <laughs> call me Moist. I thought, <laughs> your, I, I thought your name was uh, Naji, brother. So he's anyway, Najee, so <laughs> he's Najee out here. So we'll go. Yeah, exactly. I'm talking about Josh. Najee, cool. But uh nah, nah, but, man, we ain't but, uh, doing it. but fun, uh hey, fun fun fact about in Florida, you know how you can get an Arnold Palmer, you know, we do uh lemonade and sweet tea. In Florida, if you get a pink lemonade and sweet tea, <laughs> it's called a Tiger Woods. So <laughs> I ain't never... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fun I fact heard of bullshit like that. But uh to get to my J. Cole take, um I thought it was cool. I ain't gonna like, you know, regurgitate all of what y'all said. I thought his beats gave it an A. I thought the the features gave it about a B plus. So I gave it about a total for a B. I thought it was cool. 
Um, my only issue is, like I said, I don't be like, look, I hate how he puts together albums. Like, bro, like pick a mood. It start off cool with Cameron, get you hyped, and the shit kind of go melodramatic, and then it go up and down. Like I said, it looked like an EKG or a heart rate going up and down, like somebody going to cardiac arrest. When you, if you think about the rhythm of his album, but I said I thought it was about a solid B plus. Finally, he What's had. It? I would say what's weird is like when I when I say album is pretty good, what I be thinking about is what songs he gonna make into a video. That's what I want to see. I, I want to see how he gonna put this weird things into videos. None of these are singles, except for the first one. None of them are singles. That was he got weird. Amari. He just made that video. He just made that music video. I didn't think it was video worthy. Yeah, and they all dressed up in like uh, you know, like like nice, about to go out, and he got the top hat and everything like that. So I, I don't know how it goes with the song, but. Am I the only one to just think that this nigga don't wash? Like I just, <laughs> he look like it, the hair boy. It's the like, hair to do that. Like he just he wear these old like when he was at the All Star game and he had that big ass Hornets jacket on like he found out in the flea market. Mm-hmm. The one when he tried to dunk, he had that tie dye outfit. Like he just he just seemed like a nigga that just be like hustle niggas off the street and look homeless. I just like them. I think dread- he's trying to prove a point though. You know what I'm saying? Because even in the album, one of the verses he was talking about. He can drive a Honda. He can drive a, you know what I'm saying? I think it's kind of like a point that he's proving. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could be a bum and I'm still J. Cole. I guess. Oh, I, okay. Some sort of like performative art. Okay. Yeah. I guess. But I I didn't, I, I I don't like how everybody like dick riding. And like, you know, every line, um, I'm still in the game like LeBron. Oh, uh, yeah. something, something. Oh, and then the Diddy fight. Oh, he threw hands. I'm like, bro, that shit happened. Like, that's not. Oh, I barely tell us. remember that too. I'm like, he didn't even tell us nothing about the fight. Like, who won? So that's the main thing. But, um, yeah, I thought it was like a B, <clears throat> nothing major. Everybody just kind of going crazy over it. I thought it was a solid. I thought it was a solid performance. Like you know, like you said, come back. He can get rid of for your eyes only in um, KODs. But I do tell you one thing. I don't <laughs> like. I be hating how that nigga rap. Like. I hate how that nigga rap when it's time to decipher an album. When he do all that, you look at me now, I'm sitting there proud. You know, I'm like, bro, you rapping too fast for me to be driving. I don't have time to be deciphering these lyrics as I'm trying to hear the beat and find the song. But I mean, it was cool for, he rapped too good to be only rapping two minute songs. So like, bro, don't, don't, don't fall into that trap. You're not, but I think baby. that's the, that's the baby. The ba- uh, that's the what I'm saying. You're not that. the baby. You know yeah. The baby jump on the beat immediately. Exactly. He he start as soon as it hit one, maybe less than a second. He on the beat, so his song got forty hit. seconds. Exactly. But um, I was talking to somebody how I kind of judge albums from Cole, which is why he is at like a low bar to me. Is I look at his albums right, and I, I don't judge him to Drake because Drake has a lot more singles. But I judge it by like what do I consider like was the iconic album from him, right? So I said Forest Hill Drive was his iconic album, you know? Um, and then I said Born Center was his his second classic album. And I personally, I wish you could throw Friday Night Lights in because I personally think Friday Night Lights is a classic. But if you look at the trajectory, like I said, he sets the pace with all those. Now, I don't know how Ebro thought this was his fourth classic album. I don't know that at all. But I'm like, it's the same I do with Drake. Like, Drake has three classic albums to me. That's if you're reading this, it's too late. Nothing was the same, which I feel like is his best album. And take care. You know what I'm saying? So everything else, if it don't come to that, I just kind of rate it for a regular album. But this shit wasn't iconic. The best song I heard this whole weekend was that Nicki Minaj song off of Beam Me Up Scotty with Lil Wayne and Drake on that. That was probably the, I listened the, to that more than I listened to J. Cole. Album. The gone was it gone green or green sing sing green. Yeah, sing green. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. That that was that's that that song was kind of hard. Is Wayne back though? That's the real it's not, I mean he was on like it, three other it, songs. It wasn't what I told you. Well we had the conversation last time. Oh yeah say that shit. <laughs> he did he said that I'm I'm fucking with you. No, nah, I mean it's Naji's point, you know it was <laughs> the same thing. He talked about the same thing, you know. That's what, what I, mean? I said. That's why I was like, it was just funny, but he it was still good though. He put that shit back. He's like, I uh would I put you six feet uh back or be socially distant. I was like, there and we just, go, there we go, Wayne. Oh wait, Wayne. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody somebody I was in the car with my homeboy Trey. Um 
first I shout out my dog Todd Dallas. I told him I shout him out today at work. But uh, I was uh at the car. He was like, "Man, that's an old recycle verse, man. That's an old way. And that ain't new." I'm like, "No, this white, this new." Like he just said, socially distant. He he right. knew. I'm like, he was like, he knew about it. I was like, "All right, <laughs> come on now." But I don't know how but you feel. Go ahead. He but he was on like two other songs. So I, after I heard that song on the Nicki album, I went to go find any other song Wayne was on, and it wasn't the same. It was just that. It was just that song. Oh, Wayne okay. The but other, I think the it's because it was songs, the three of them. Yeah, the other two songs, it was like, uh, like one of the songs, I swear, if you go listen to the album, one of the songs, he repeat himself like 40 times. Like every verse he do, he repeat it. And then he do another bar and then he repeat it. And I was like, man, what the hell? But that uh, that song, yeah, I was like, okay, this this one, this is what I want to hear right here. I ain't gonna lie to you. I First off, Banks, you remember that leak that we got of uh, Certified Lover Boy? I think he scrapped yeah. that shit and made a new album. Okay. <laughs> I think right. he scrapped that shit and made a new album. <laughs> hey, look. I ain't trying to be that person, but I think which car might be in his bag for something. I don't know. Hopefully, Drake. I don't know. This nigga might be in his bag. If you think about it, this nigga gonna drop five strong ass songs. I, I guess if you wanted to say laugh now, cry later, I guess. But um, you could put that up there. It was very popular. But you got the what's next, the lemon pepper freestyle. This I think he just did a verse not too long ago with somebody, right? That was real clean. He did that one for um. What is the one he did with Wayne uh, that was B.B. King? Uh, was that No Ceilings 2? I think so. Yeah, so I'm just saying, like, he done dropped a lot of heat. Like, he ain't, like, had no ass bar, so I don't know that. That's Certified Lover Boy, but don't let me jinx it, because if it's ass, he's going to get the same standard as everybody else do. But I think Nicki probably had the best fucking... Does Drake have a bad album to you? Yes. What? The More Life Playlist. More... The More Life Playlist. Yes, the More Life Playlist. That's the one we had the song with uh the Young Thug and um Two Chains. Uh I don't see oh more life. Okay. Then the one with 21 Savage. Niggas keep sneaking and dissing. Let me see. Oh, this thing. Okay. More life. I did go back and listen to views. Views were on smooth, but nothing was the same as his best album. Like that's not even oh that's, that's the one even. with Wait, more life, fake. This one with fake love on it and yeah. free smoke and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, like nothing was the same with his best album. But Nikki, I was glad to see her back in her bag because, like I said, I, I feel like that more life. No, I feel like that was more of a female album, though. I don't know. Like I said, because girl, girls this, talk about this album like a motherfucker. If you're reading this, it's, it's too late as a classic to me. I don't care. That shit, you can stop okay. that shit. That yeah, shit. I would agree with that because he had Blim and all that singing on it. I didn't even like mm-hmm. this. J Lo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That album was a female album because I mean, girls they would nonstop talking about that album. Like, oh my god, you heard the Drake? Oh my. I remember when the album came out. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't for us. Yeah, no, that was that was for the the females. So you didn't oh. like more life? Okay. Nah. Uh, what else he got? Uh, Scorpion. I thought Scorpion was a good album. If you take the yeah, first I like half, Scorpion. I like Scorpion. I think the first half he got what he what you wanted, but it's not. I don't put that like if I go for his top albums, I don't put that. You know, it's honestly. That uh, what's that one thing he dropped when he dropped all them old songs that he never put out? That could be an album because he got you know the one he got uh, Dreams Money Can Buy. It was uh, the he just put out like last year. Oh, one of them care packages or whatever it is. Yeah, the care package. Yeah, when okay. he just put like all the old songs that never made it to radio. I mean, that yeah. could be, but uh, but yeah, no, like I said, it was good to see Nikki back. Um, I didn't know Views did six million. Okay, uh, yeah, Views. I told you that's views. his most. That's his most uh, successful. Hey. Hold on, I don't know. I don't know some of these acronyms, so let me not say that. But yeah, that's the most successful one. Mm-hmm. The Cole album that you said you like that's that's Cole's most popular album too. Yeah, but that's what I base them on. Uh, Four Hill Drive. Yeah, Four Hill Drive. That's that's Cole's. That's Cole's. Oh yeah, album. three times, three times platinum. Okay. What Four Hill Drive? Mm-hmm. Born Center. That's my favorite one. Uh, that's two. That's I like two Born Center. My favorite too. Born Center went hard. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I think it's it's pretty good. Nothing too much, like I said. I now this nigga playing basketball again. Nah, nigga, ain't nobody. It, it, they got like J. Cole warming up. I'm like, bro, he scored three points. Like, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> not saying he shot one three. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying I'm not. He he got a technical or he shot a free throw. That was the only reason. He, he can't be master P, P, bro. He can't be master P. He got a tip in, and then now I will say I think that nigga probably can ball because to be in your late thirties and make a professional team. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That means that nigga probably is balling. I mean, but is it off his name or is it off his skills? I mean, you. 
I don't know. I I think some of it has to do with That's his name, question. but I ain't gonna say I to be thirty some odd years old and score three points in a professional game. It ain't that hard, bro. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm like I said. Let's just see how it go. But I mean, he had to make the team. But I didn't think about that whole. But he he joined Rwanda. I don't. But know. we all. But we all athletes, bro. So I you, right now, flag football or football or basketball, we can make a team. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like yeah, an overseas I mean, team. I, I made it professionally, so I understand. Um, okay. but, but okay. nah. So I <laughs> I think everybody just need to calm the fuck down on there. Uh, I'm mad that uh. Swiss Beats and Timberland about to get credit for some shit I said a long fucking time ago with this verses coming up with Bow Wow and Romeo, but that's really a waste of time on Lil How Wayne. is that a versus? That's not it's a not good a, versus, bro. It's not a versus. I don't know what it is. Romeo got like three songs that I could probably well, bro, name. name get, give me four Romeo songs, bro. He gonna go get Bow Wow, fucking Cinderella with Nick. So, so All right, let me go on and get my Google's on. No, that's what I'm saying. Names of songs that you know. No, don't Google. Oh no, you look up early. <laughs> no, I got no, you. No, see, I, I, no, I got this. I got this. It's uh, um, uh, oh Romeo, something, something. Four songs. Oh yeah. Hold on, that's one. What's the uh, song called? Come on, now, nigga, you didn't say that. You didn't say the exact name. <laughs> I know Cinderella. Uh, Google hey, Romeo oh, discography. Yeah. Never ever fall in love. Uh, he got that one song. He got a uh, "You Can't Shine Like Me," "Not Like Me." I'm a real that. star. You know what it is. Okay. That, that, that was as fresh as I'm is. Uh. Yeah. And then, um, and then, um, what's the fourth one? Oh, I got one more. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Damn it. Uh, That's three. Hold on, God damn it, God, Let me get one more. Shit, hold on. That's it. Oh, uh, I, I can give you one. What's the song? Uh, uh, Romeo. Uh, damn, what's a? It's a song that they used to say his name and shit. They play that all the time. But um, that's about it. So let's just no. go to Bow Wow, okay? Bow Wow, bro. It's Harlem just, Shade. I know. I'm just you saying. Let's just. Let's, a so, just go, so. let's just go from this. He'll he'll end it with "Like You," okay? But let's just go this. "Like You," "Fresh as I'm Is." Uh, let's let's just We're skip playing it. basketball, ball, hardball with the boy. Shout out the boy Sammy. Uh, he got beware the dog. He got little bow wow. You are so fly. He got like you. He got my baby with jagged edge. He got puppy love. He got bow wow wow yippee yo yippee yay. Like come on now, like he he got too nigga, much. Yeah, that nigga. Was he got something guy. coming out called Before Thirty. That's gonna be his new thing. Okay, okay. come on now, brother. Come on, we're not. But talking, we're not talking. But about I will say though that little Romeo definitely. Got the money though, you know what I'm saying? La Romeo got the business. Well, I think that's the just because it's, yeah, because it's dad, because he got P. Yeah, I think that's yeah. dad just set everybody up though. But I definitely don't want to see this versus, and that's just no disrespect to no, bro. I don't want to see that um, to um, what you call it, uh, Romeo. Yeah, that's no disrespect to Romeo. We just we all know, nigga, you ain't got no hits to go bar for bar with Bow Wow. Okay, <laughs> like you really uh, had to be a La Romeo fan, like you know. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay, I got it. Number four. Your parents don't understand. Ha ha. With Nick Cannon. Nah, nah. They don't oh, God. understand. I don't even. Jimmy, the Jimmy you Neutron. put Nick Cannon in there. Hey, brother, look. You didn't say who could be on there, okay? First off, Nick Cannon got one good song. I can't remember what, what it is. Jigolo? I was like, Jigolo? I think that was. Was that the one with B2K? No. Which one's the one he got with B2K? He got mm-hmm. one with B2K. See, Banks on here with a computer tile. I'm on the I'm on the Tesla internet. Feeling freaky. That. Oh yeah. Anybody feeling freaky? Are you just making up chords? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know that song. How do you know that song, bro? Bro, we all we first off, don't act like Nick Cannon wasn't the coolest nigga in school when drumline and love don't cost a thing come out, okay? So if you're gonna sit there and act like you did not want to be Nick Cannon. I ain't never ever. I didn't. I didn't want to be Nick. But I ain't never. I thought he was cool. I didn't want to be Nick. First off, okay, not be Mm -hmm. Nick Cannon, but we all fuck with Nick Cannon when he was a funny nigga on all that. When he was a cool nigga on the Parkers. I was (laughs) never like a. Hmm? Nah, bro. I want never no Nick Cannon fan like that, bro. Why? I think while or now, this probably his fucking his best shit. How would you know Nick Cannon fan? Nick Cannon was that cool person that came and joined after Keenan and Kale. And all that type shit. Nick Cannon was cool yeah, as fuck. Bro. So you ain't watch. So you ain't watch Love Don't Cost a Thing. Yeah, I watched it, but I didn't go. Man, you know. So you Nick ain't watch Drumline. Great. So you ain't watch Drumline. Drumline was good. Good. The fuck. Drumline was, was I mean, good. 
It was, a, it, was, it was a, but it didn't make me go like, man, that boy Nick Cannon is that guy. No, it didn't. Bro, you got to get over that hate in your heart, bro. Was you supposed to be the Nashville Nick Cannon? No, hell no. <laughs> I leave, man. Let that go, man. Shit. Um, what is is that the only movie he had? I know he had one more, right? He had a, couple I mean, he had a lot of other movies. He had a whole lot of movies. Now, which ones do we usually say? Oh, that's that's that's. We ain't about to look it up. It's going too long. Anyways, that versus is not going to be what we had for. So let me see what we got left. Uh, Joe Potten bug, Joe Budden podcast demise. So that Joe one actually, bug. Yeah, that shit is actually pretty funny to me. So uh, if anybody don't know, Joe Budden, uh, one of me and Banks's, um, very we watched it a lot. Uh, podcast. I ain't gonna say favorites, but I know it was in my top five. If I would say, if I ain't gonna lie, I mean I'm gonna get a nigga is. His props podcast that came to a demise. Uh, I know me and Banks was talking about it earlier. Did you ever get to catch up on what happened? Uh, Najee? Yeah, yeah, I watched. I watch. Hey, hey, before you go into that, Roll Bounce. I, that's one Nick Cannon movie I actually liked. <laughs> <Roll Bounce. laughs> that, was Bow, that was Bow Roll, but, movie. But, Roll, but Nick Cannon was in there. Yeah, but he wasn't a focal point. I, I mean, that's all I can give you, It was an ensemble you, movie. Yeah. That's all I can give you, bro. Quick question: Is lottery ticket a classic? Am I the only one who feel like lottery ticket is a classic? It with Mike, huh? Lottery ticket. Lottery, lottery ticket with Bow Wow. It with Bow Wow and Brandon T. Jackson. Brandon T. Jackson. I'm broke, nigga. It's like that. <laughs> Damn, well, I can't. I know I've seen that movie many times. Sorry, not it. Ice Cube. Uh, Loretta Ooh. Devine. Ooh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Banks, I'm proud of you now, man. It's not to be tiles. You know, Banks is like, come on, brother. So anyways, uh, so yeah, so we got Joe Budden podcast. Uh, it kind of came to an end this week. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but for people who didn't, basically, they came mm-hmm. back on. They was on like a small break. Then they came back on, kind of aired it out. And then I guess a week or so later, Joe come on with a leaked audio that he tried to edit out, but somebody caught it, which I still don't know how that happens. But he fired them on there and um, they put a video out, which they was charging two dollars, which I wasn't going to pay. Thankfully, somebody screen recorded it and put it out on YouTube, um, basically telling what happened. So I just kind of, you know, what's y'all take on the whole situation with it? I mean, I don't know, man. I I, I think my biggest question is, is he still going to have to pay them? Because on the podcast, he was definitely talking about. Well, they're not gonna be able to do any podcasts for the next year and a half. I'm gonna sue them and this, that, and the third. But if they can't do a podcast because they're under contract, then that means they still getting paid off of what he's doing right now. So it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? I'll be sitting at the house. Like, shoot, I want you to turn up, make the next show big because I'm still gonna get paid. So that that was my biggest thing. Like, are, are they still getting paid or they just can't get no money because he's gonna sue them? Mm-hmm. Oh, but you can go. Uh, what I think of the whole thing, I think when we talked about earlier, it's just a, it seemed like a big mess. Joe looks unstable. Uh, you know, we got first slaughterhouse, we got everyday struggle, we got his re- personal relationship with Charlemagne, personal and business, because you know they even did a little show together, uh, for a brief minute or 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 an episode or a pilot, however you want to look at that. Um, and now of course his own small circle of friends, quote unquote, you know, let Joe tell it, I guess. But um, I think I just think it's it's wild that, like you said earlier, like what was the point of having everybody on the show to reconcile for, for it to fall flat a week later, and now Joe and not Joe, Maul and Rory are recording their own you know thing and talking basically airing it out and sharing their grievances and everything like that. This has just been a really messy couple of weeks for Joe. And then on top of that, today, we get the young lady uh, that was a part of here's the the thing is or here's the thing, whatever his whatever the other podcast is under his belt, talking about sexual uh, misconduct. Uh, I mean, I don't know what I don't know what's happening on Joe's side, but it's not it's not good. I mean, what, what was your take on? you know, basically everything that transpired. 
Um, to answer Najee's question first, they weren't on the contract for the podcast. I think that was one of the things they were saying on the, the video. Like, they didn't work for Joe. No, not for Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah they was Joe. all on a profit base, and that mm-hmm. was all his shit. So I think that was one of the things they were talking about is they were talking about the podcast, but he wanted to keep the podcast for himself. So that was kind of one of the things. So they could go, especially he fired Rory. So and then he also said on his live that he's not gonna sue. But as far as that, I mean, like you said, I just think he's unstable. I think what happens when you have a show and you get, you know, to a certain point, but your goal wasn't to be the Joe pod, the Joe button, the we podcast is supposed to be the Joe button podcast with some people. And he's shown constant, constant times where his ego always takes over, but he acts so progressive and when he does stuff like he's I can see this person I could come from here you know you want to see it on both sides but I mean ultimately at the end of the day this shit is just a character a camouflage and everything to redirect the fact that if I could sit there and talk about somebody and sit there and break it down and understand where they come from you deflect to the fact that I got my own fucking problems and I think what's happening in light is he has his own self-destructive tendencies and it's just kind of coming through. Like we said, when he had them on for the show, it was just like mad awkward to have them come through and clear the air and you supposed to own up the things you wrong. Like, but the first thing they come on there and you over here talking about, do you, they ask you, do you feel like you owe your friends respect? And you say, no, I don't owe anybody respect. And that's clearly a lie because you know, there's people in your life. Like you don't respect your mother. You don't do this. You don't owe anybody nothing. That's a lie. But to go against the grain with the question because you don't want to seem like you may be conceding to something. You got to go against it all. Even every question that they ask, clearly they wouldn't be back on the show if y'all didn't have some type of, you know, discussion about it. So why are you going against the grain with every question? Is it for shock value? Did you really mean it? Did you have them come back on so you could bring up, you know, or did you really come to rectify it? Because I mean, if you listen to Maul, Maul was like, there's no respect there. So there's nothing really there. So I think he was already kind of checked out. And then I personally think that, I mean, it's like a marriage, right? Um, They helped build the Joe Budden network on podcasts. They helped it. The show's not what it is without them, you know? So I don't see what's wrong with them wanting a piece of it. And then every story that- Well, it really, I don't see what's wrong with them asking questions. That's that's what- Rory was saying, yeah. Yeah, and then this is just cold for anybody. You know, they doing something with friends and stuff like that. Know what you're doing when you come in to the business with them. You know what I'm saying? Don't let your friendship cold to the fact that, like, you know, you don't add, you just naive and thinking your homeboy going to take, you know, out of it. Like, I mean, you could ask Banks plenty of times. Like, I I don't do anything, you know, without being like, oh, you, you sure you don't want to get in? Like, this nigga has to say no. So, you know, if something happens or whatever, and let's just say I can some small fortune, I'm just, I, he, and, and it's something that he chose not to do. He's well aware of it and he chose it. You know what I'm saying? Like he, I asked the question so we wouldn't run down that road, but it's just like, you listen to Rory's story and every time he talk about some Joe calling him, cussing him out, you know what I'm saying? That should have been strike number one the first time. First time, it ain't gonna be no. He's his ego, man. It's, it's Joe, man. He's just destructive, man. Yeah, it's I mean, really just him. Yeah, I mean, Kevin Hart said it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's Joe. Um, it's like you had something, but you wanted to sit at the top by yourself, and now you ruin something. Because he said, even like Kevin Hart said it. He said, like, I'm the show. He like, I'm. You know, it's all Kevin Hart's brand, right? But ain't like they can't ask nothing about themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like the plastic cup boys and all that stuff. And he said anything that they do, he discuss with them. So it's plenty of time. It ain't like he got to make decisions with them because their brand is not theirs, but he's still, he doing something with his friends and stuff like that. And I just, you know, I don't know, like I said, me, I mean, me and Banks have had this discussion off air. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know, you know, what he wants to do with this and he knows what I want to do with this. But I also told him, you know, if anything I I do, you know what I'm saying? It it comes to a joint, you know what I'm saying? And that's the same thing I brought up with, with Najee. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you come on, you know, when you come on, you know, if you want to stick to one thing, that's cool. But you have the option to go what I go. And if that route happens to come from there, you know what I'm saying? You have the option to join on. So it's it's like, but I'm going to respect your decision if you choose to do the latter. I mean, the opposite. But don't be upset about it if something comes through it. And I think like 
you know, you it's just he just he's just really erratic to me. I mean, like you said, he he just has this this long history of just just demise on everything he touches. Just demise and he doesn't see it because he thinks that he gets it because he's able to see I want I want people to pay attention to this, right? And I can answer this one perfectly. There's a difference between a nigga who knows his problems and can address his problems and constantly work on his problems and say it to you out loud. And there's a nigga who knows his problems and can tell you his problems and still does the same problems he's doing. That's not growth, the second one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am somebody who knows exactly what I want, who knows exactly what I'm cool with having them conversations with myself. So when people try to tell me about myself, I know that, like, when they be like, no, I think you're doing, I'm like, no, I know exactly what I'm doing. Like, I don't sit there and lie to myself. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly the moves that I make. So if I'm out here doing something, let's just say I'm out here doing, like, let's say I'm out here robbing people. I'm conscious of what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I could be doing it better, but if I continue to do it, I know exactly that I'm constantly doing it. So I don't get upset with them results, but I don't sit up here and be like, yeah, I'm going to therapy and I can see it from this way and I can open and hear from what this person's doing. And like, you, like we said, why the fuck even go to therapy with this nigga and have him on the fucking show just to back walk everything that you're saying and making him seem crazy or kind of making it seem like he is this insecure person because he called him insecure multiple times Mm -hmm. this insecure person about some shit that he works for the show he does a show shit you know what i mean so it's not it's not wrong for him to come and ask a question i just feel that like for you to keep acting as if joe you didn't make it to where diddy jay-z or any of them places made it the podcast probably saved you from working at Foot Locker with Lil Zane. Let's let's just keep it a buck. The the fact that you hopped on the social media platform early is the only reason that you're not telling people where to find the size shoe at in the back of the in the back of Foot Locker. You're the reason why you're not the plug at, at Sneaker Factory. So let's not let's not keep it a buck. You had Tahiri and you would do like this weird shit and you know like you would always post her ass up there so niggas will watch the show. Mm-hmm. You. I forgot about you. I mean, you had the podcast. I wasn't really checking, but I mean, it did somewhat. You got on um, Everyday Struggle and you would get a little extra, but then academics will say some bitch shit and niggas would kind of give you like, it's almost like (laughs) Kwame Brown, right? Because (laughs) Kwame technically made it to the league, but let's be real. It's Kwame. You know what I'm saying? Like he the Kwame Brown of the rap game. Like, technically, you can play basketball because you're a professional basketball player. But let's be real, Kwame. We're talking about the Hoopers, okay? So, like, let's I'm not putting you on, like, if they say you got $5 to build a player, Kwame, you got a buck. I'm probably just going to say the buck in my pocket. It's a surplus now. So, I just, you know, for you to keep acting as if, you know, you like, I'm not these industry niggas. I'm not this. I'm not this. Like, yeah. nigga, you're not even in nobody's top 100. Top 100? Yeah, he's not a top 100 rapper. Joe, because Joe can rap. Exactly. He might have a song, though. He might have a song to hit the yeah, top. Yeah, pump it up. Every time I hear no, it. No, no, no. Like, I mean, but Joe can rap, though. I'm not talking about making songs, but Joe's a rapper. I'm talking about artists. I ain't talking about rappers. I'm talking about Okay, artists. I'm about to say, because Joe can rap. Yeah, okay, he can. Uh, He can. Because <laughs> anyway. that whole group, I mean, that was a group of rappers. Slaughterhouse, all of them could rap. and he was Exactly, and all of them still seem to have good connections but him. And That's true. Exactly. That's to your point about him being destructive and stuff yeah, yeah, I just feel like you know like as you see that right you know what I'm saying you know now he's coming aboard and stuff like that it's just kind of like you know how do you how do you put it in business you know what I'm saying because like they said when you get money you don't do nothing but amplify who you really are you feel me so like when you see that and they were just the quote unquote friends I definitely him and Maul were you know what I'm saying like yeah. what's your thoughts from there like you know when you see something like that like does it kind of deter you from wanting to do business with friends? Does it, you know what I'm saying? Does it kind of make it seem like you do stuff professional or like, how do you feel like with this realm? I mean, cause think about it. I mean, banks, you know, we've talked to celebrities now as much as we may not want to sit there and do it, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But like, we're in that like spectrum. We can't sit here and be like, grab her by the pussy, like Donald Trump and act like that shit can't come back. You know what I'm saying? Cause you see, um, young Miami tried to be like Nikki unblock me and then they pulling up an interview with her and Charlemagne. you know what I'm saying so like 
they come find you when they want to, you know what I mean? So it's not like we are not in that spectrum to where, you know, this is kind of like the lane we carve. And when yeah. you see, uh, I, this makes me even more afraid to partner with friends. Yeah, I know. I bet you was like, oh boy, I made the right decision. <laughs> Cause I, I think it's just like, I had spoke to you before my value system on our friendship is, is so high on, on any friendship, right. On any friendship that I have is so high ranked that I, I just can't jeopardize it over, over misunderstandings and especially like integrating money and responsibilities into that. I, I, for me, and like, like I've said to you, I don't know if that's uh, immaturity on my part. I don't know if that's being selfish. It could be all of those things and I'm okay with that. But for me, it, it was like, yes, like this, it was affirming, you know? Now I will say Joe's relationship with his quote unquote friends was clearly toxic. They both had issues communicating with each other. And even when they came the first time and sat down, they made good points about how men, um, how we don't really talk to each other uh, in constructive ways because there's a lot of pride and there's a lot of ego. Uh, I, I, I agreed with that, uh, you know, that sentiment that we maybe should learn how to talk to each other more. Uh, basically that same communication that we want from our women, really we should try to practice that with each other instead of it being sort of like grunts and, you know, or, 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 or we asking each other for five minutes real quick and then we cool after that. I mean, not everything, really takes a physical altercation for us to, you know, kind of get back cool. I know that that's kind of the norm, but um, so, so to wrap it for me, it was like, okay, uh, any decision going forward that has to do with people that I really value highly on a personal level that I can't separate from the business. I mean, this, that was, I was like, okay, this is, it was just affirming for me. What about you, jo uh, Najee? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, I just feel like it's, it's different friendships. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you got to know what kind of friendship you in. Um, because for me, I feel like if anybody know me, I do a lot of things. Like, yeah, I mean, anything you can think of, I do it. And I always try to bring one of my friends with me. You know, so I do feel like, yeah, it can be it can be hard. So when you put money in stuff, you start making money or even if you start getting famous or, you know, going out, it's a, it's the same thing. But you got to know your people. You got to know your clientele. You got to know who you're with. You know, I got to know what kind of friend I'm with, because some of my friends, they might be OK with doing money. They might be OK with women in the situation they might be okay with you know certain things but some people i gotta know i know my friends you know and i gotta go well i don't really think this is gonna be a good look for you i might be like hey i'm trying to do this fashion move this gonna be for you you know what i'm saying hey i'm trying point. to do i'm trying to do this uh like even like this like this whole scenario even like a podcast or something that's talking or you know speaking in public you know this is kind of like a public voice speaking you know, yeah. some of my friends should not be public speaking to anyone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be some things they're going to say, like, oh, God, like, oh, we got to cut this out. You know, so I feel like you I'm I'm all about bringing my people up. Like That's that's my biggest thing. Like anything that I do, if somebody want to know how to do it, I'm going to show you. I'm not trying to get no money from you. I'm not going because I'm I'm in good. I'm in good with myself. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to make it off your back, you know, but I'm going to always try to bring you up. So if I know how to like, I, I say when I was making masks, I was making masks. People was like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I made a video and gave it to people like, hey, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. I don't got to, we can all eat out here. You know, like I don't have to, I don't have to eat and then just feed you crumbs. I want my people to grow with me. So, um, I just feel like at the same time, you got to know your clientele. You got to know your friends. You know what friends you can do certain things with. And I'm all about communication. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times when it comes, if, if you're your real friend or your real people you're close with, you got to start to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You got to have those conversations with them that's going to be uncomfortable because if not, it's going to be a big breakup in the end. If we never talk about money, we never talk about like, hey, we're going to split it 50-50 or we're going to do this or hey, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to do that, then when you leave, your friend going to be like, yeah, man, I spent all this money. He ain't put nothing in. I bought all the drinks. I, and so mm -hmm. I feel like that's why when it comes to things that you know are like the 
a majority of why people break up because of lies or hate or money or fame or women, those are things that we gonna talk about up front. I'm gonna mm -hmm. be like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I seen old girl over there. Is that your old lady or is she free game? You know what I'm saying? Or, hey man, look, man, I made, I made this amount of money tonight. So look, I'm gonna throw you this or you put in for this, you put in 50, I put in 50, we're gonna split it. We gotta talk about that from the front because shouldn't nothing like this happen. Like they was talking, like they, they were talking about their money or something like Joe, Joe cheating and this doing that. Like I can't even see me in no situation, even with James or anybody where we would even get to that point. You know, mm -hmm. because we talk about everything. Like, I feel like I want to do things with my friends more than I want to do things with strangers because the chemistry going to be there. You know, like, we going to have shit in common and talk about, and I'm going to know what he going to say. He going to know what I'm going to say. So I'm going to want to bring us money instead of, you know, doing because you're going to do it with somebody. So why not do it with your friends? That's how I feel about it. You made a good point about um, understanding and knowing what lane you could bring certain friends in. And I think that that's uh, a powerful sentiment. You know what I mean? Like just, just if, if you know, like for instance, you know, I'm a teacher and you one of your ventures has to do with education, right? So you know, like, okay, I'm gonna bring Banks in because that's what he's passionate about. That's what he does. You know, if you got something going on where you need, maybe you make in, you know, a video uh, that you want to upload to your YouTube, you know, James edits and, you know, he he cuts stuff and do it like, I'm going to get James to be my editor, something he's passionate about, you know, da, da, da. I, I definitely agree with that and, and, your, and your take on bringing friends with you. Um, I agree with that. A whole thing you just said, just in, in your respective lane. Right. So I'm not trying to make my I'm not trying to make James running a, a school academy over the summer. Right. Because that's right. That's backwards. You know, he's he's not going to care about it. He's not passionate. He don't, you know, I'm not trying to have you, I don't know, edit my videos or whatever the case, because that's not something you're interested in, you know, or, or have your homeboy or homegirl on here speaking. And they say, you know what I'm saying, 50 times or they they don't have yeah, a filter. I mean yeah, nah, I mean, and all, you know, they don't have a filter and they're going to they go, every other word is going to be a curse word. And so we can't even get you on, on YouTube and get you monetized, right? Because you're cussing all the time. <laughs> um, so that those, yeah, you make, you make some powerful points there that I, I mean, I totally agree with um, wholeheartedly. Just get your friends, you know, if you decide to partner with friends, get them in a lane where they can be successful. It's like, I mean, Jay, I know James coached, um, and I know you, you uh, off the air, you spoke about training people. You want to amplify your your people's uh, best abilities, yep. you know, and like when James was coaching basketball or whatever, I'm sure he had kids that, you know, could shoot, but maybe couldn't dribble or whatever the case. And I mean, you work on those things that are that are foundational, but you want to you want to put that shooter in a place to shoot. You know yes. what I mean? You want to put your clients, your, 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 um, your workout clients in a place where they're amplifying, you know, whatever exercises they can do and, and whatever positions they can be in, uh, according to, you know, how, how strong they are, whatever the case. I, I definitely agree that you should put your friends in positions based on their strengths so, that, so they can highlight them. And then within that, you got some room to be like, okay, bro, you know, I know, I know you're not, you know, the best, um, I know you're not the best video editor, but man, you, when you get on this mic, you speak fluidly, everybody understands you, they love your, your personality, you know, let's try to work on some things and, you know, maybe pitch you in and out. So, um, I, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. Uh, did you, did you already say your piece, James, about how you feel about working with friends? Uh, did I say it? No, I think I just run into the problem of like, I'm always like, I want to, oh shoot, I'm tearing up. I want to see everybody else eat. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I feel like, you know, I try to put everybody on and the only thing I can do is like this right here. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we run into that problem. Um, Not everybody can come on here and do a good job. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody can come on here and talk. Some people can't hold a conversation when the podcast is on you know i mean you could ask banks when he started versus how banks is now you know what i'm saying like it's it's a it's a very it's a very much of a personality change you know what i'm saying like you have to really really sit there and 
listen to yourself and be like, dang, I got to do this better. Then you got to pay attention. I remember when I started, I would say, um, 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 um. So to go back and have to edit that like a million times to hear it now, to know that like, just kind of slow down when you're talking and things like that. But even then, after you do that and you have some people on two, three, like they just don't, they just don't get it or they don't resonate it or resonate or they just don't, it's just not for them. You know what I'm saying? And it don't even have to be just a podcast and it can be like just the right. business aspect or the marketing aspect or anything like that. Like, I mean, I get on Jayla's ass all the time. I'm like, Jayla, I try to put Jayla in situations to make money because Jayla's really talented. That's my niece. The Jayla is really talented in art and stuff like that, you know? But Jayla has the drive of a car sitting on four blocks in the middle of a ditch. None. <laughs> If, if anybody needed some reference with that, none at all, no drive at all. So it's, it's kind of like you like you put her in a situation where, you know, money's on the table or, you know, running the show or something like that. But then you got to go back and correct the mistakes because, you know, and a lot of times some, some of the things, even we're working with friends, I think banks to see, I mean, you could ask banks, like I try to be perfect. I know I'll never reach it, but I try to be, cause you know, at least I'm putting out the best I can. So, you know, I'm expecting something the way I'm I'm working on 10, you know what I'm saying? 110, 100, 100,000 and 10, you know what I'm saying? So to come out the gates like that with everything, you know, especially if you, if this is something you kind of come for leisure and you know, it's like, man, I just want to record, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, it's a whole lot of aspects. You got to market, you got to get this, you know, you got to get the episode out. You got to put on the site. You got to make sure you send it to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he, you know, he said it and, you know, I'm appreciative of him telling me, you know, like sometimes I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's not what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think when we first started, we kind of had to figure out what people's roles are. And a lot of people, you know, you don't want no Rory situation where you sitting on your four or five times cussing nigga out, you know, <laughs> kind of work with friends and stuff like that. You know, like you want to, like I said, you want to see him eat and everybody eat at the same time, but it's just kind of like, everybody has a niche and sometimes your friend's best role is just to cheer you on to support you. You know, that's about as good as it can go. I mean, we all can't eat, you know, um, but I, I know I, 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 I use, I use, okay. I use cam. I use cam as an example. Cam had to earn this shit. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't just sit there and be like Mookie's friend and everybody go. No, Cam had to eat his uh his little Marcus brother. I can't remember his name. Uh, Andrew, he had yeah. to become a lawyer. All them niggas got to eat. You know what I'm saying? They got to go out there and get their own. You know, I'm pretty sure Mookie would have loved to bring them all along, but they got to go out there and make their own ways. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's lane is to be like the best friend or without nothing going. You know what I'm saying? Like some people got like things that they own. And you just kind of bring up, you know what I'm saying? But y'all, it doesn't change the relationship for it. But like you said, you just got to put people in their path or you just can't kind of really do it. You know what I'm saying? You got to just do what's best for you. And I think sometimes pulling out of that, like cutting, severing that line is probably just as hard as trying to find people to do it because sometimes it's just like, you got to go. You can't do it. You, you can't wait no more. I think... uh I think another thing is when it comes to your friends and it comes to doing different things, I think sometimes it's hard for friends to take a back seat and take back seat roles too. Um, and I think sometimes, like you said, if this your realm, I gotta be humble. And I think a lot of people, like especially like celebrities and things like Joe, there's no way he could take a back seat role. He don't wanna take a back seat role. And I think, you know, that might be hard for a lot of people. Uh, just to kind of sit back and be like, hey, man, I know that you've been doing this, but let me show you something different. You know, like, okay, yeah, you're good at editing, but let me show you a little trick how we can do this a little faster. And sometimes people, it, it's the, the ego set them back, you know, and I think, uh, because I, I, I put it in this perspective. So like even making videos. So I do the little funny videos. And a lot of times when I'm doing a video with somebody, people are always be like, oh, well, you know, I'm I'm not a good actor and I'm awkward and I'm weird. And it takes them to kind of sit back and for me to be like, hey man, I got you. You know, I'm here for you. You my friend. Like, let me show you this. Okay, I like that, but I want you to be realistic. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you need that direction, but it takes a person to really, you know what I'm saying, take in that direction. 
Some people, they can't take any direction. They can't, I, I can be like, hey, well, let's do this video. It's going to be funny. Like, let me show you, like, let me show you my vision. Let me show you what it's going to look like. We're going to record a little clip and let me show you what it's going to be. And, but like I said, it takes those people to be able to take that in. Some people, they can't, they can't take that. They can't take criticism and they can't take their vision. They uncultural. Yeah. They, they can't be, they're like, ah, well, I don't really like that. You know, and they, and it comes off of, oh, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be funny just because it puts them out of their comfort zone. And, uh, and I think that's one of my biggest things is when it comes to my friends, like, I got to sell it to them. You know, even even your friends, you got to sell it to your friends. Like, I got to be like, hey, man, look, like, let's go over it a little bit first. Let me show you this. You know, let me let me bring you into it. Because I think even with your friends, when you're doing a lot of things or you, or you got your vision and some stuff that you really want to do, it can be overwhelming, you know, and it can yes. be like, well, I don't want to do all that. You know, I just want to <laughs> be here. I don't want to do all This is too much for me. So yeah. you you got to be able to, picture to them where it's like hey look this is all the stuff but i got a hundred percent i just need you to be two percent like i just need you to take this two percent off of me i'm gonna do 98 of it so i think it comes with a, a sale and a pitch you know because i mean that's, that's just how you got to bring it because because like you said you want to bring your friends in but they might not have the same vision they might not have the same drive they might not have they might not want to do it but in the end you like hey well i'm gonna eat and i don't want to I don't want to pay nobody else when I can just teach you this. Just let me give you a little something. But mm -hmm. it takes them to want to have to even want to take it in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a true growth and true work, you know, to sit up and, and look at yourself and be like, I I need I need to do something or I need to be accepting or I need to hear what you're saying. I need to be coachable. Uh, I need to be understanding that you are in so many words, the sensei, and that you going you gonna to take me along the way, uh, yep. take me under your wing and, and make sure everything's straight. There's got to be trust there. And I think to make the parallel with Joe and them, clearly there was no trust after no a while. Trust. You know, even with Maul's initial, how's this money coming? Or how does this work? And you flip out. Well, why don't you why don't you sue me then? Or why don't you get the lawyers involved? Or why don't you do these things? And Ma's like, well, I mean, I just asked you a question. And that's crazy. It, but that's what it is. Like it's a yep. trust issue. I think that's what you're getting at too, at the basis of what you're saying. Like you, I gotta trust you. If you're telling me, Nadia, we about to get on this video, you about to make a TikTok and you want me to do these things, I'm gonna be a little apprehensive. I'm gonna be like, okay, you know, I'm not really like whatever. But I'm gonna have to sit back and be like, okay, I trust, you know, you know what you're doing. You're gonna have me, you're gonna have us, because I mean, if we're making a TikTok or we're making whatever it is, a video, we both gonna be in it. Uh, you know, I trust that you're gonna have us looking a certain way. And I think that's the foundation is trust. I gotta trust, and of course, you know, after respect too. But initially you gotta you gotta have that trust in there. Like I trust you're gonna lead us on a path. Uh, or we're gonna come together and lead each other on on the right path out of whatever situation that you're trying to do. But um, yeah, are we are we going to Kobe being inducted or what you want to do, Jay? Sir, I mean I'm cool with going to that one. I was just gonna say, um, ultimately at the end of the day, I think Joe's biggest issue is whenever somebody gets to the point to where you take all the shine from Joe, that's when he seems to act out. He's out. Yeah, act, huh? He's out of it. Yeah, like I think the fact of the matter is the fact that they knew that they're worth and you couldn't yeah. fathom the show being the the podcast. It had to be the Joe Budden podcast. It had to be salary. They had to do that. And you just kind of flip the fuck out. You don't have control over it. I think ultimately at the end of the day, I think Joe Budden likes to control everything. And it led to his demise. I think even Kevin Hart said that, which he said a good take. You know, he talks about him a lot. But, you know, ultimately his ego killed and cost him like one, something that was going to be iconic. But that's all my take on that one. I feel like we we harped on, harped on it enough mm -hmm. um, to go for the Kobe. I was just, you know, happy and sad at the kind of the same time. It's just kind of really surreal to me. I don't think he's still dead, um, but it, it's just, man, you do all that to be the iconic as you are. And then you don't even get to see yourself enshrined in the, the Hall of Fame. But I kind of I, I don't know, man, it's just. It's just bittersweet. Yeah. Um, his wife is I see why she got that four million dollar ring and he ain't leave her because she is a motherfucking trooper. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, to go up there, deal with them kids, three of them by herself now, you know, oldest one going to USC, lose one child and your husband, raise two, three more, and then you go deliver that speech. And I think you didn't even get choked up to the end. You know what I'm saying? A lot of of shout outs, sir. I don't think she gets her props for her and Lauren London. You know, Lauren London ain't in um as much or it's not as much spotlight as nip but you know her and lauren london just for the tragedy that you know had to happen to them both of their you know loved ones and you know how they kind of spearheaded themselves and kind of carried on the legacy and you know i don't i think that kobe thing is going to seem surreal to everybody for you know our, the rest of our entirety um also shout out to tom clancy whoever did that michael b jordan movie for giving her just enough lines to where I could take her character serious. Yeah, yeah. Man, she, she, she just, she's got just enough just lines. Just enough to where what she was your was, What was your take? I know first time I asked you, you said you fell asleep. Yeah, so first off, just enough to where I could believe she was an actor to what a point she didn't overact. Um, I thought it was about a C. I'll give it a C. Really? Because the way that they talked about the movie was like, I give it quick take. Um, the way that they talked about the movie with no remorse after they did it, I thought it was like this big vengeancey plot. Plot, just to come to find out that you know, Josh, have you seen No Remorse yet? No, no, I, I ain't watch it because you know I got some movie buffs that tell me movies, and all of them said that it was kind of. It was uh, just okay. It was just okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So it didn't, it didn't feed me to go watch. It. It's just, I mean, the plot of it just to set up a Rainbow Six franchise was just kind of like dumb to me, but. You do all that. I think it's a black lead. I guess that's kind of my big thing. I mean, that, it, was Tom, I, I, it was Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy that made. It? Yeah, it's Tom Clancy. It's mm-hmm. in oh, Rainbow shit. Six. It's in a Rainbow Six. Um, I thought it was good. I mean, I thought it was a C. It was something to watch. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna watch know, it tonight. Yeah, I feel like I don't get why Michael just can't keep his shirt on. I don't. I don't see <laughs> like nigga. We know you work out, brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you got to think. Eighty percent of his fans are females. They want to see the body. 80% of my fans are females too. So all yeah, I'm gonna say they don't say, wanna see that body, bro. Bro, go on somewhere, bro. You out here looking like a whole non-meat eating ass nigga, bro. Go on somewhere before I put Floyd. <laughs> I put Man, Floyd, before I put Floyd on your uh <laughs> your stegosaurus ass nigga. Don't be coming over here <laughs> talking about talking about real. I'm talking about me and Michael B. So, anyways, like I said, but now I was about I'm to see Joker. You are what? I said, go ahead, keep going. Keep oh, going. Okay. Uh, anyways, but no, nah, I thought it was a C. Um, thought the acting was kind of pedestrian. S- script was kind of bland. Um, this guy, man, look at this guy. Acting was oh pedestrian. My. Look at <laughs> Michael B's was Michael B. Finally didn't overreact. I mean, overact. Um, he 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 good for that. All that over talking and over emphasis, over inflection, uh, flexion in his voice. I just like I said, the I mean, plot- his character kind of every character he played, they they need to overact. Every character he play requires him to be half ass naked. That's why I've come through. Okay. None the only of time he ain't ever overacted and I couldn't stand corrected is when he was in Fruitvale Station. That was the only time he was kind of mellow. He didn't over he didn't overact in raising Dion. I don't know if you consider that. Because <laughs> he was like all of five five <laughs> minutes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, but I'm waiting for season two of that. But uh I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. And then the plot twist was to start a war with the Russians, I thought that was dumb. Like you just, like, I, I thought that that's what made the shit give it a C. Like it was just dumb. Like you set something up on purpose, and then the dude who I thought set it up was actually a good guy, and it was just, it was a C. You know, I thought it was gonna be more than that, but it is what it is. But um, how y'all like the new class of people about to get inducted? Man, I see. I'm, a, I'm a Paul Pierce fan, man. I ain't even gonna yeah. lie to you, bro. Fuck Paul. Yeah, um, don't, don't do Paul like that, bro. I'm a Paul Pierce fan. They man. got my dog Ben Wallace in. You know, yeah. you know my parent, my family from Detroit, so you know they got the. Where Chauncey? Did Chauncey ever make it? No, Chauncey ain't in yet. Him? Why are they him. doing Chauncey like this? Look how long they put put fucking Ben Wallace in. Ben Wallace been retired for almost what twelve? 13. First off, they just putting Chris Webber in there. But Chauncey should have been there before Ben Wallace is what I'm saying. Have you not seen Ben Wallace's fucking stats? Ben Wallace a four time Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, you want me to read his stats off? I mean, you ain't got to read his stats. No, nah, brother, go ahead. Banks, go ahead and say something while I read this up. Mark, no, we don't want to read his stats, man. I mean, we don't want to hear his stats. I mean, I, I just feel like what was crazy about that, though, was the, the Bill Russell, though. 
how Bill Russell they finna put him in. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know. <laughs> I knew he I coached. Thought he had already made it. Yeah, he ain't made it he yet. Was, he's he was already in the Hall of Fame, but this time they put him in for coach player. Yeah, you know, they basically give him the coach because you know when he played back in that time, he also became the first coach. So he coached his team as he was playing for the team. He was mm-hmm. like one of the coaches quit and he took over as the coach and was getting paid as coach too. So they put him okay. in the Hall of Fame again for coach. I was like, <laughs> this motherfucker, 12 rings, fucking Hall of Fame, in the Hall of Fame twice. Who going to Hall of Fame twice? Bro? Come on now. That's wild. That's no, wild. I, I knew he was a player coach. I didn't know the circumstances though. So that's interesting. I didn't know. I didn't know he was yeah, getting he, paid as both. He was getting paid as a coach. Like he was literally the first black coach at that time. He was getting paid as a coach. That's and got rings. And had a good season. <laughs> and he, he could get mad at the team and be like, you know what? I'm going in the game. Can't no coach do that. You know what? I'm tired of this, man. Let me take this down. Let me, I'm going to get in the game right now. You know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas not really go down. Let me even get in Bro, y'all ain't doing that, bro. I'm going to get in the game. <laughs> I'm trying to find the list of other guys. But like you, I'm a big Paul Pierce fan. It's, I'll- ben, it's ben Wallace, Paul Pierce, um, Chris Webber. I did. Uh, what's his name? Kuko, or I can't think of his first name, but uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, I uh, thought I seen something that said Tim Hardaway on something, but then I didn't see that nowhere else. I ain't seen <laughs> but Paul Pierce, man, I, I'm like, he deserved Like I said, Paul, and I'm just, I was looking for a big shot, I thought big shot was gonna be on there, but that boy Paul fucks with Paul, man. I, I hate Boston, that's what's crazy. I fucking hate the Celtics, but I mm-hmm. always was a, I was a Paul Pierce fan. Yeah, probably. And Paul Pierce just he just, he just uh, got put off the show, didn't he? Like that's what's crazy. Like a couple months ago, he got oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Hold on, hold on. live with with strippers in the background. Yeah. I found it's it. Strippers. I found it. Ben Wallace, sixteen. Bro, we season. don't care. NBA, shut up. Ben Wallace, NBA, NBA champion, four time Defensive Player of the Year, six time All Defense, five time All NBA, four time All Star, two time Block Leader. I mean Rebound Leader, one time Block Leader. And he was undrafted. Will be the first undrafted player in the Hall of Fame. That's crazy. Shut up. I know you don't care. One, one, one week right. step that they wild, put on Paul man. Pierce. That's, <laughs> that's why one, one week step that they put on Paul Pierce. They had him like number four top free throw shooter uh, in the NBA. I was like, bro, I don't care about the who's a top free throw shooter in the NBA. Man, right. Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce about them hoes. You know he ain't. Married. So Tony. Tony Kuko. That's who yeah, he was talking about. Coach. I just and told you. We got Paul Pierce, Chris Bosch, Chris wherever. Yeah. Chris oh, yeah. Chris Bosch was the other one. Chris Bosch was. I don't really one. care about Chris Bosch either. I ain't never been over Bosch fan. Man, Bosch was a lethal. Bosch was. was it, really? it was D Wade, bro. Bosch was lethal. Okay. Yeah, was first off, first off, they don't get they don't get that championship without Bosch grabbing that rebound. Let's not forget that. Bro, that's that's one rebound though. Bro, did you if, not see if, his if, stats for the but, whole but entire look, bro, time? If we if we fucking replace Bosch with any other big man, and you got D Wade, the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Now you, I don't fuck with Bosch, bro. Bosch was not that great. Bro. Don't make this man that great. He clearly was a Hall of Famer. He was what a fourteen time All Star, two time NBA champion. He was twenty five and ten when he was in Toronto. Trash. The only time, the only time his for stats some went reason, down, I still he, feel like he still, trash. He was still. He still eighteen. He was eighteen and nine when he went to Miami, and that's only because he had D Wade and LeBron. And I ain't that's looking up like nothing on these stats. I'm just telling you these off the top of my dome because I know him. Like, come on now, he was an integral part. And on top of that, he was the first like him and Chris Webber. Like, they was the first big man stretch big man. Like, if Chris Bosh was playing now, he would like he would be like fucking Jokic or something. Like, no, not Jokic. Jokic is a passer, but I'm just saying like he could step out, he could shoot. He, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the, it's not. Get it's, out of here, bro. bro, just say you don't like it, brother. You already said that. Stop hating. I don't know. The last one I got before we go, because you out here looking all mo because you didn't get picked to be on the Miami Heat with your salty ass. Uh, I just want to know. So I seen something the other day on, well, I've seen it on Twitter like the last two, three days. We, we talked about it before, but, you know, to like this extent where I'm about to do it now, it's just kind of like, I seen this topic come up about somebody paying 50 50 for rent. Right. And I kind of wanted to know your opinion. Like, what do y'all feel like the role of a man is for this generations? What do they feel like the model role of a man is? Because so, so go ahead. I was going to say, so, so the emphasis on the story was basically the man, they people think that the man should pay a hundred percent or 
So you know what I'm the, saying? Like what? So this girl was like my I was she was I think it was her husband or her boyfriend. He was going out there, he was looking for a house. So they stayed together. He was going out looking for a house for them. And then when it came up to the house, you know, they would kind of split the mortgage. And so she said, hell no, don't even worry about doing that because I'm not splitting no mortgage with no person. I'm not out here. Uh, I'm not paying no rent. If I if I pay rent, then I live with you. I'm going to date you. So um, and I've seen this a lot. You know what I'm saying? Where females just say they're not going to pay like 50 50. You know what I'm saying? And they're not going to stay in the house. Well, they, that's, that's basically the sense, like they're going to live, you know, and it's, it's a broad, it's, it's not, I mean, it's a, it's a very vast majority of females that think this way, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just kind of want to wonder, like I said, we can't be, we can't order pink lemonade. We can't celebrate our birthdays. We can't, we can't do so much. You know what I'm saying? What is your expectation of a man? Like, what, is, what is your definition of a man? Like when, when your mothers tell y'all to go get your man, are they uh, when y'all get older, are they gonna tell you to go get somebody like Lil Uzi or somebody like that? Like when they say, get you a good man, get you somebody like NBA Young Boy. You know what I'm saying? He don't do gay shit like order pink lemonade and go out to Miami for his birthday with his homeboys. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are what are y'all values on what y'all think a man is for this generation coming up? Or what do you, you know what I'm saying? What do you feel like they think the values are for a man? You know, what do y'all think? as two older men who have their set views on, you know, what they will do in a relationship and what they expect their, from their significant others, if they have one or it, when they get one. I mean, I, look, man, I, I work way too hard, bro. Like I, I, I can do things by myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I can make it by myself. I can grow by myself. I, I work too hard. So if I'm in a relationship with somebody, that's what I'm, that's what I'm with. Now it's a difference if the person i'm talking to like if we we come up with something like we're gonna grow together and they like hey well i'm finna go to school to be a doctor can you hold it down that's different you know what i'm saying because then i can be like okay well look you're gonna go to school i'm gonna take care of everything right now when you get out then you know i'm gonna do something you know what i'm saying i'm gonna try to go i'm gonna go do my thing but if we're in a household together you know what i'm saying we're gonna pay bills together i mean i because i had i was in a relationship for five years and my girl she was a teacher and you know, teachers too, they fucking they make thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. They don't make a lot. Exactly. But a at the same thing. time, huh? That's it, not a goddamn thing. No offense, man. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, I was willing to so I basically did the math to where like I made 70% more than her. So I paid 70% more of the bills, but that was just because of the math. It was still basically 50 50 but if we would have paid 50 50 of all of our mortgage and bills and rent she would have been like a hundred dollars a month you know because that's just that was a lifestyle we was living but at, but i just feel like we got to be paying something like i can't be like oh i'm just gonna pay 100 percent of the mortgage and you're gonna stay here and all you gotta do is cook I'm just, i can go out to eat if that's the case you know what i'm saying i can find i can i can, if i'm doing all that i can buy me somebody to cook me some food make to meal prep me some food for a week you know but I feel like the biggest thing is people, women these days want to be independent, but at the same time want to be taken care of, you know? So, and it, it's like, y'all got to do something together. You know, if we're going to be together, we're going to be together. Like if you want to grow and we want to build, that's build together. But I'm not finna, it ain't going to be no, I ain't paying. Oh, no, I'm not staying with y'all. I'm not paying the mortgage. You're right. You ain't staying here. You ain't paying nothing. You ain't staying here. hundred percent. You are correct. You know, but if I pay the mortgage, and you like, oh, I'm going to pay the light bill, the water bill, and all that. And that's cool, but that's something that we got to talk about. You know what I'm saying? That's got to be a conversation we got to have. I wonder why men can't be like, well, I, you know how women be like, why I fuck him? Well, why can't I be like, why give you dick? Like, that's never, that's never, we never get that option. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we, I don't know, bro. I feel like, I feel like a dude, we can, we can live off the grid out here. If you, if you got that meat. We can be out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, bro, I'm going house to house to house. I ain't got to pay no rent. I can just be out here in these streets. I feel like you can do that if you wanted to. You know what I'm saying? You, I don't to come over to the house. You going to cook today? You going to bring the meat today? Yes, like, baby, they about, to, they, they about to evict us. Do you got anything to put on the rent? Like, no, nah, <laughs> but I could put this in that ass, girl. Go ahead and let me get this. <laughs> I don't know. Banks, what you say? Um... <laughs> I'm still stuck on the 
living off the meat, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's even a double standard to that too, man. Because what you, what are you sorry if that's what you all you got to bring to the table, right? But they say like, broke if, niggas can't do nothing but lay good dick. Be like, yeah, oh, I'm like you sorry, and then I'm pretty sure you done slipped up and had a couple kids. So you ain't taking care of them, still going house meat to meat or whatever you want to do. I don't, uh-uh. I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> like that setup. But um, I guess for me, I, I, I mean, I agree. I feel like you should, you should carry your own weight and whatever that looks like. Like you said, you know, you figured out the the math and you decide to take on seventy percent. I really, I really think it just depends on your relationship, you know, and what you want to put up with as the so called leader in the household, uh, as the man, which I feel like, you know, you should be, um, when, when you sit down and you divvy up bills and you divvy up responsibilities, you know, you and your lady or you and your significant other gotta be on the same page with what's your responsibility. Like for me and my wife, right? Like, you know, she had all that she was single. She had all the bills that a single woman has. And then when we came together, you know, I just felt like as the, the leader and the person that's supposed to make things in your life smoother, why are you still paying all these same things? You know what I mean? Like, why, why are you still paying for your phone? Why are you still paying? Like you ain't got to. So for me and her, we came to an understanding, like there were certain things that I was going to take off your plate uh, because I just felt like that's what, that's what you do. Um, now she did, did she take so, anything off your plate? What's up? Did she take anything off your plate though? Did she take anything off my plate? Did she take anything out my yeah? Uh like you said, with uh having to worry about food. I ain't never gotta worry about a meal any day of the week. Um, and that's pretty much, I mean, we still are really young in our marriage too. So I mean, there's still room for some some moment to occur where it's fluid and I might want more or I might want something different from her. And then I feel like then we'll have a conversation at that point. So I, that was another point I wanted to make too. Like I don't want to sit up here and act like everything is is forever. You know, like like your your good counter, what is she doing for you right now? I'm I'm fine. You know, I feel satiated with all the stuff that she provides for me and et cetera, right? But there could come a time where I'm like, dude, like uh I got, you know, m- maybe I might want to tap into more of my, you know, entrepreneurial side, right? And we all here know uh, entrepreneur, it takes money, it takes time, whatever the case. I might need you to cover the mortgage and the phone and the car whatever you know for for a period amount of time and you know i just really think that we just got to talk that through and we got to have an understanding of what that looks like for us uh this is a conversation i had with james you know i think a lot of the times too we take a lot of the stuff off women because at least in my experience with women they react so violently when stuff don't go right you yeah. know, like if if they got if they got a bill due or if they got something going on and they I don't know, it, it got missed or it got messed with, you know, it's just like the world didn't crumble down. You know what I mean? And that's something that I feel like we are more equipped to deal with. We, we're more equipped to shoulder, you know, issues when it comes to dealing with money. Uh, we're not on here crying or we not, you know, freaking out when something needs like we just make it happen. Right. Like if something on your end happened and your money came up short in some significant way, you're not going to sit up here and be like, well, you know, who, what can I, you're going to figure it out. You're going to sit down, you're going to game plan and you're going to figure out how to make that extra $200 or that extra money up where I've seen with them. It's more of like a, not to say that they won't get out and get it, but it's just that unnecessary stress and that unnecessary, like, Oh my God. And worry and all that stuff. So I don't know. For me, it, it's it's a lot of that too. I take a lot of, I take a lot of that off your plate, uh, so you can be focused on providing certain things for our family, right? You you could be you could provide, um, you know, like I said, cooking or even just developing your own whatever you want our family to look like. You know, whether that's spending more time together, whether that's going on trips as a family. You know, I want you to have the money disposable so you can set us up. And take care of us in whatever way I want to, or whatever way we see fit. So I mean, to me, it's not always monetary, um, but I, I do see it as I'm the person that I'm okay with shouldering the the brunt of monetary issues. Um, 
as long as, like you said, uh, Najee, you're 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 backing me up in some significant way that I'm okay with for the moment. Yeah. What about we you? Gotta talk. I think it falls for the whole like you know, and when I say this, I don't mean like it, it, you got to pay fifty fifty. You know, like I said, when I when I see that stuff, I'm like a lot of these females are staying with somebody who probably makes a significantly amount of more money than them. So if you don't have the means to afford 50-50 in your relationship, that's fine. I'm not speaking to that. But I'm talking to the people that bring just as much to the table. If I bring 50000 you bring 50000 you're not going to a lesser role. You know, and I just think that it's so unrealistic. I mean, you know, when you live by yourself, you know what I'm saying? Or did you did you not require yourself to pay rent? Hell no, you'd be homeless. You know, and it's not the whole thing about living with a child. I look at it from... The last time you had to live somewhere rent free, you were a child. I mean, not. Um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. I don't see it as living with a roommate. The last time you had to live somewhere rent free as a child. So if you think you about to live with me and think you about to have some say so on some here, you better sit your ass down and go be up in this house and the street lights come on because that's that's what a child is. Because if you don't want to take no bills and no responsibility and think that you about to live a lavish responsibility life free, no, because I feel like. I could help with the kids or I could do this or that's what daycare is for, or, you know, I could prep it or whatever. Like it, the house, you doing the house and paying the utilities, especially if you could barely afford it. You know what I'm saying? And if, if we, I look at it like this, if we stand somewhere and you can't afford rent, you probably ain't going to be able to afford my utilities either. Like let's, let's keep it a buck. Like the utilities sure. usually kind of semi reflect where you stand, you know what I'm saying? So like, let's just kind of go from there. But I just think that like everybody's living so unrealistic. Like, why why are you too good to be a partner? You know what I'm saying? You you so independent, you're not nobody's this, you're not nobody's property. But if this was a board meeting and like say I needed sub, sub a certain amount of board to like get something ap- appealed or approved, you don't even went out because you have I had the majority. And so that's going to be the same with this house or whatever decisions. I don't really need you there for me to make a decision because you decided to take a lesser role. So I'm like, cool, bet. Stay in your lesser role. I'm going to be over here. And while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and do what I want to do because that's that's what you do when you are the person, the, the, the head proprietor there. And when you are, quote unquote, doing the lesser roles, you get the lesser say so, in my opinion, because you feel like you're too good to be a 50 50 because you had the option, but you want to do less. Now, I do wonder, I, y'all can answer this one. Do y'all feel like sometimes that y'all may take the responsibilities from the females? Like in order to kind of keep that dominance and instinctually like, man, I feel like if I give her this, this is and I want to do some shit. No, nah. absolutely. I- you say yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't, I don't absolutely. do that. Like that's crazy. Like I, I, I don't fear I don't fear having a strong woman. I, I mean, I don't fear someone getting paid more than me. Like I know my role. I know my worth. You know what I'm saying? So I know what I got to offer is more valuable than you know what I'm saying, than, than the you make more money than me. But I like my biggest thing is that you know, we just gonna grow together. You know, I don't want nobody, like you said, like if you don't got it right now, that's cool. Like you ain't got it right now. I'ma hold you down. And it's it's vice versa. If something happens to me, I I should be like, okay, they're gonna hold me down. Like I'm not I'm not scared of, you know, like damn, I try to do this move, it fell through. But my old lady make money, you know what I'm saying? And she like, hey, don't worry about it. I got it for right now, you know, get your shit together. You know what I'm saying? That's how we're gonna grow together. But like, I don't know, like I, I don't think that that don't really bother me. You know, like I'm not doing, I'm not paying bills in this and third, so I can be you know, like in control, like, no, no, I feel like my main role in general, I'm going to be in control anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, like, no, that don't bother me. I just always kind of wanted that. But like I said, I just feel like y'all got to pick and choose, ladies. Y'all either want to be independent, can do everything yourself, or you want a relationship, you want a partner, but you can't sit there and try to be independent, do everything for yourself, and then fall back to a docile role. It's not going to work. Just stop telling yourself what you can and cannot do. And if you can't afford the shit, just say you can't afford the shit. Just say you can't, can't afford it. Just say you can't afford it. Don't say what you is and you ain't going to do because he can, that person can go find somebody to do it and then your ass will be alone. A lot of niggas just happen to put up with that shit. But like Josh said, I mean, like Najee said, I ain't putting up with it. So I don't know. That was the last one I had. I just thought it was kind of a good take, you know. So y'all got anything to say before we go? Mm-mm. 
Oh, okay. Well, um, before I go, I just want to make sure I get a shout out to one. Um, kind of, it was a like a big brother, father figure to me. Uh, he passed this week, but I made sure I wanted to, you know, shout him out for this one. I'm probably shout him out every time. Um, we got signed to a network a couple weeks ago, or about a week or so ago, and I was calling and tell him, and it lined up like some TV stuff. Um, as I was sitting there getting ready to text him the news, I found out that he had went to the hospital and had a heart attack. Um, Juan had kind of looked out for me while I was in Japan, did more than look out for me. You know, he tri- brought me on and treated me as family and all that type stuff. So I talked to him like every week. So, you know, to call him for the news, for the surprise. And then that's how I kind of found out he did it kind of sucked. But I just want to make sure, I, you know, I gave him a shout outs and, you know, to share, you know, the good success of the podcast, you know, the eight more than 92 podcasts is officially signed to the Great Convo Media Network. So, you know, uh, the price tag don't went up, people. You know what I'm saying? On that one, I want to thank, you know, everybody that kind of got us here for that. You know, I want to thank my my right-hand man, Banks, you know, who don't give himself enough credit, you know, for being the the A to the B, you know, the Superman to the Batman, the dynamic duo podcast. And I want to thank everybody that came on. I want to thank Najee for agreeing to join the ride you know, ride through it. And I just want to say, I appreciate y'all. And other than that, since y'all ain't got nothing, uh, this has been another episode. So we're going to holler at y'all later. Peace.